Hey, and welcome back to part two of Can You Beat Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD Without Jumping? Last week in part one, we covered worlds one through five, and we ended off on a sour note. However, in part two today, I think we're going to have a much better chance and even more insane tricks. So without further ado, let us continue. As we dive into one of the best looking worlds in my opinion, we start off approaching this checkerboard pattern. Now, while you can bounce across it to the end, there's actually no problem with falling through, as the rest of the level is just a straight shot to the end. Stage 2 brings us to a platform that is unfortunately mandatory to jump over, so that is another fail for us. Now, Stage 3. Stage 3 looks possible, but there is no way to bounce up to the platform without giving us another fail, so we'll have to take this one as a loss also. Stage 4 is deceivingly simple, and if you have enough patience, you can actually pass through all these flipping platforms. The real slap in the face comes when you have to get to the end of this level, only to realize you have to get up to a set of steps just to reach the end of the stage. Oh well. Stage 5 is another impossible one due to the fact that we can't get up this platform, and another thing is that the rest of this level looks easy if we ever could get to the top, so that is another loss for us. Stage 6. So this level was once again a testimony to the patience you will need to get past without jumping. Starting out, we exit the starting platform and wait for the mushroom platforms to line up just right. Now, with enough speed, you can bounce onto the curve which will bounce you high enough to get to the next platform. Now, to finish the stage, all you need is a steady hand and plenty of patience. Every platform has a small lip that we can bump off of giving us enough air to keep crossing. The bridge near the end is what's going to be a final challenge, as we have to cross two gaps within a very small space. And while we can't pause buffer like Monkey Ball 1, we can still use a bit of a pause buffer to our advantage to time how well we can bounce up, leading us to our well-deserved victory. So the bonus for this world is actually fairly simple. Like previous ones, the key to this one is keeping your balance as the whole board rotates. When the time is right, roll up to the edge, and you have yourself another easy win. Stage 7 is all about speed, as we're mostly just worried about keeping our balance. There's a small gap near the end, so be mindful to stay centered to avoid fallout. Bounce back, and with the last second finish, we can move on. Now for stage 8, a normal person would see these steps and give up, but not us. With a little speed and hitting the right angle, you can actually bounce right up to the stage. Now, we just roll to the end like you'd normally play, and just be thankful this vertically extending platform requires no jumping, as it'll lift us right to the goal, and no hassle, straight on to World 7. So, the World 6 boss is where we get our massive mommy milker, <clears throat> singing boss lady. With this boss, the weak spot is the microphone. Now. I thought it was impossible to get up there, and ended up getting a time over on my first go round. But it turns out you can beat this boss, and in normal ball form. When we begin the boss, we have to bump the platform she's sitting on. After that we do that three times, she's now on our level on flat ground. Now, there's two ways to beat her. The first way is by some janky RNG, so when the rocks come down to hit you, you can actually bounce up and hit her. But if you wait around after her singing cycle, the mic goes just low enough where we can roll right into it. We complete this cycle a few times, and if you're fast enough, you should just be able to have enough time to win. Overall, about half the stages were impossible, but managing to beat a boss has improved my mood for this world. So we can move on to World 7. Stage 1. Things heat up, pun intended, in World 7 as we start off with another straightaway stage. The speed panels give you enough bounce to get over the bumps and avoid jumping. The rest is pretty smooth sailing as long as you know what you're doing. Stage 2. If you wonder what hell looks like, this is the place. Tight railways and little room for error make this one of the toughest stunts we've pulled off yet. Starting off, we need enough speed to bounce to the platform with the railing, which isn't too hard. Then, we have to get to the top of the railing. With the right angle and enough speed, you can bounce off the curb to the platform and end up on the railing. Keep your balance as you get to the second circular platform, and again, bounce up to the railing. At the end of the railing, we go far enough to bounce onto this ring-shaped rail. Taking time to orient ourselves, we now have to gather as much speed as we can to not only bounce off this gap, but on top of the platform too. 
once again, we pause for an easy way to reorient ourselves. I cannot describe how difficult doing this is because trying to bounce upward from this little corner here is honestly ungodly. I did pause to make it slightly easier to reorient myself, but it is not very easy. Lined up, we push forward to bounce on a small ramp onto the last circular platform and finally into the goal. Is the level humanly possible? Yes. But we did have to splice it. The Summit's trick took hours to pull off, and I'm not going through that pain again. Stage 3 is a breath of fresh air compared to the last stage. Quite simply, you just play level as normal because no jumping is required to fall. Stage 4 was almost impossible because I couldn't really get over this ledge at first, but it turns out as you use the skull, you can just do the speedrun strat to skip half the stage. But the rest is you can just do it as normal, but my only piece of advice is to take your time. Stage 5 reminds me of the level we did in the previous world. While it's technically possible to get past the spinning platforms, even if you did get to the end, you're unable to get up these steps. Stage 6. Now normally when you see steps, you'd think this is impossible. But remember, we're a bunch of chads who are unstoppable. Now it will take some patience and finesse, but if you bounce off the skull at the right spot, you can walk up the ramp, leading you to the platform with the double rails. Trust me, this is not as easy as it looks, but it is certainly possible. We bounced up to the rails and proceeded to do the same with the second set. Once we got to the yellow platform, we were pretty much set, as the rest from here is just watching it balance on the rail in a straight shot to the end. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed I did that entire, like, one section in one go. That was kind of epic. The World 7 bonus stage, while simple in design, is just not possible to do jumpless. It's too steep to hop over and simply too tedious to attempt over and over. Stage 7. Once again, the starting platform was a curb that's impossible for us to bounce over, but using the environment to our advantage, we can utilize the skulls to get over. It took a few tries, but once you're over, you're pretty much safe. There is another ledge here that's impossible to get over, but you can actually bounce on this little bone on the side and get over it just fine. The rest of all from here is a smooth ride up to the top, as all you have to do now is fall into the goal. Stage 8 makes things a bit simple, and thank goodness there are ramps. With this, we can just crash through the level with the obstacles proving to be no threat to us. The end is just a straight shot with a bunch of speed panels, and after that, it's giving us an easy win for World 7. The World 7 boss is surprisingly doable. All you have to really do is avoid the boss phases as they're going on. Once the boss falls apart, all you have to do is quickly run over the poor defenseless monkey before it hops on one of the balls. Do that a few times and the boss is over. Honestly, this one's a bit annoying, but it's not as bad as some of the bosses that we did. Overall, World 7 went really well. Only one stage was impossible, and not even the fiery depths of hell could stop us from accomplishing our goal. Next, we head on to World 8, to space! World 8, Stage 1. So, starting out, you're gonna notice this world loves using speed panels. And while that can be exhilarating, it's gonna prove to be a real annoyance. While the level is straightforward, it's a challenge to keep your balance as one wrong move will send you flying off. Stage 2 is not only extremely easy, but also fun to pull off. Not much can be said, but I'll let the footage speak for itself. Stage 3 is sort of like a maze, but it's pretty easy to navigate. Your real enemy with the stage will be running out of time. Normally you could just jump through this level in 10 seconds flat, but in this case we're going to need every second that's available to us. Being mindful of the bumpers, we make our way to the top with barely enough time to finish before a timeout. So stage 4 looks easy enough as the beginning starts off by launching you through a few corners, and we take a ramp to the next section of the level, and this is where the problems arise. You see these speed panels, there is no way to go around them and they will launch you off the stage. So how did we get around? Well, when I was doing some testing, I found out that the speed panels have a cooldown if you touch them. And if you activate one, but are still on it, it will not launch you again until you get off it. So to abuse this tactic, we use Gon Gon. Being the heaviest, we can hug the wall, activate the speed panel, and since it can't launch us again, we can safely cross both with ease. Now, once we go, we face another big problem. There are not one, not two, but three speed panels facing in the opposite direction just to throw us backwards. But once again, we have found a way. Using multiple pauses to keep ourselves oriented, we can just barely stay on the rail, getting us past and leading us to the goal. 
let me tell you, this level was impossible. The amount of planning we did just to get through may not look like a lot in video form, but let me tell you, you give it a try and it is insane. Stage 5 wastes no time when you know it's impossible because they immediately give you a giant ledge you can't get up. So thank you for that I guess. Stage 6 starts out with us moving up these dual spinning U-shaped platforms. While it is a pain, the key is timing. You see right there? If you hook it just right, you can roll this and use it as a ramp to just barely get over. Heading up to the next floor, we can now get the same type of platform, but now it moves horizontally back and forth. This one is fairly easy, as you just let the platform scoop you up and then you can make the gap. After that, you can get to the goal. So the bonus for World 8 is easy in concept, but hard to pull off due to the strict time limit. And actually now that I think about it, there's really no reason to jump in this level as you're in a bowl anyway. The worst part is that failing this bonus kicks us out and we have to redo the first 6 stages again just to give it another attempt. Regardless, fall down as fast as possible, follow the line of rings, and with some precise placement, we have another win. Stage 7 is unsurprisingly not very possible. Believe it or not, trying to get past rolling oranges is kind of hard. I mean, why would you even attempt to beat this one? It's not even close to possible, right? Stage 8. This one is a bit luck-based, unfortunately. Basically, just roll off the edge at full speed and pray you get the angle right. If you do, you'll slip in like this. So the World 8 boss against the captain himself is impossible as a ball. But not as the pyramid! Similar to the World 3 boss, all it takes is some careful maneuvering and just poking his butt with just the tip. Do that a few times and we have taken down the final boss. Overall, World 8 went pretty well. Only two stages weren't possible, but we were very creative with the ones that we did get finished, and I feel pretty satisfied with what we got accomplished. So now we can move on to my favorite world, World 9. World 9. So, World 9 is my favorite world in this game. Something about the environment and the new music just feels right to me, and on top of it, a lot of the levels remind me of classic Monkey Ball. Stage 1 starts off fairly simple, but make sure you get yourself up. If done right, you'll shoot clear onto the other side without having to jump. Stage 2 is one of those stages that seem simple in concept and execution. Keep your balance on this bumpy one-way beam and we're out of here in under 30 seconds flat. Stage 3 is unfortunately impossible. There's no way to bounce up, plus the space platforms makes this not even doable. Stage 4 is once again simple in design, and oddly enough, too easy. If you want to be extra, you can try to roll from the side, to the bottom, or just go with the flow and snag yourself an easy win. Stage 5. At first my biggest foe in this stage was the starting area. It's completely round, and similar to World 5, finding a good angle to bounce out was nearly impossible. But, about every 30 tries, we made it out. To top it off, even if you do make it out, you still have to finish the stage, obviously. And after quite a few times, we managed to find a way out, and this level is actually a nice challenge without jumping, all things considered. Just be mindful of the very steep curves, and keep in mind of the time. Otherwise, it was a fun stage to finish, and we have finished this one. Stage 6 was actually pretty fun to do jumpless. A majority of this level takes place on these really thin beams, so you'll have to be really precise. Starting out, we encountered these blob things I'll refer to as squidgies because I can't find the name for them anywhere online. The first one you encounter, you can roll over it as soon as it goes down. But when you get to the first big platform, and this is where we have to be very careful, there are steps that go completely flat. So if you hurry, you can make it just to the last one without having to jump and just stay balanced on there. Now, getting up to the last circular platform is fairly simple, but now we just need to bump on this curved rail and carefully make our way out and around, leading us to another victory. So, stage 7 is a bit of a pain. 
we found out it's actually easier to make this by landing on the platform below to the goal. It takes some getting used to, but it is possible. Stage 8 brings us back to the simple one ways, and we have to just speedily make it to the end of the stage. Not more can be said other than trying not to fly off the stage. Stage 9. So, you see all this mess? Yeah, we're not doing that. So how about we do this? And with that, we have beaten World 9. World 10. The final world in the game and a fittingly heavenly journey for the how we've been through. The first stage reminds me of classic Monkey Ball, as to get through this, you'll need the momentum to make it through these U-shaped ramps. Once past the ramps, it's an easy cruise to the finish. Stage 2 is unfortunately impossible. We face a very tall step with nothing to bounce off of or any way to really get up there, forcing us to quit. Stage 3, oh stage 3. It's probably one of the hardest ones we've done. Going straight ahead will lead you to the final part of the level, but these checkerboards will cause you to bounce in a random direction. After getting extremely lucky after playing this stage for quite literally 30 whole minutes straight, we managed to do this. That level is ungodly. I can still can't believe I fucking did that bullshit. Stage 4 is another very tough one. We wait for roughly 10 seconds for the platforms to line up, then you have to get on these rolling platforms at a high speed to bounce off the lip of the cylinder. Once you get onto the second one, balance for a bit longer to get enough speed so you can bounce off to the safety platform here midway. Avoiding the speed panels, we can get onto the last two cylindrical platforms, and if it all goes well, we hit the goal. That's a fun stage, that one was fun to do. Stage 5 is infamous for being one of the hardest stages in Monkey Ball history. And you know, it's kind of insane to think that anyone's ever been in the stage with a jump. So you know, it was very surprising to us when we found out that just kidding, you can't beat the stage. Look at the map, there's no way. <laughs> stage 6 takes us to a giant clock. Now, normally you'd have to jump on top of it, but if you get enough speed, the arm will throw you in the air and you can land inside of those safety rails. Once you're on the area, we go full speed in a straight line and we can just get over that orange bump and we are straight into the goal. The bonus for World 10 is one of those stages that reminds me of classic Monkey Ball and doing a jumpless is challenging yet fair. The gimmick with this one is how we have to balance on these thin platforms while they spin counterclockwise and clockwise. However, if you stay calm and prepare for the sudden change of speed, you'll finish this one in no time. Stage 7 made us think outside the box, as there's not a lot to roll onto. But after some careful examination of the map, we found out it could be possible to just free fall into the goal from this precise point. The platforms line up just right, and after about a solid half hour of attempts, we made it in. This was honestly one of the coolest and my favorite skips we've done without jumping. Stage 8 is fairly linear and promising, but then we hit a big problem. Huge gates that block up half and several spots where a jump is required. Unfortunate. Stage 9, the final stage in the whole game. Funnily enough, there was really no reason to jump in if we could. This one plays out like a traditional monkey ball stage as we make our way up vertically. Using the speed panels wisely and making a quick stop at the end, we have finally hit our final goal. With that, we have officially beaten Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD without jumping. Before I share the final results, I do want to admit, starting on this project, I didn't think most of these stages were going to be possible. And I really appreciate Ninja Star's assistance in helping me gather footage. We spent the last 4-5 to five months on and off pushing the limits of this game's engine, trying to show what was truly possible. And I'm glad he helped make my crazy idea a reality. If you want the raw footage of this entire playthrough, check the link here or in the description, 
and it will take you to my second channel that hosts the full video with proof that we did not jump. Now that we're done, we can look at our final results. If we tally those numbers up, it means 73 out of 100 stages were beatable without jumping, making only 27 impossible. That means 73% of this game can be beaten without a jump, technically making this a worthwhile challenge for classic Monkey Ball fans. And hey, if you think you can beat any of those 27 stages we claim were impossible, feel free to prove us wrong. I would love to see this game get some more attention. You know, take this as a Monkey Ball challenge. Again, thank you all so much for watching. And Ninja, did you want to say anything before we end off the video? Thank you, Tay, for inviting me on for this video. It was actually a pretty fun idea. And we pushed the concept way further than I thought we ever would. I thought we'd only get like a couple, you know, maybe like half feel lucky. But we honestly went way beyond what we really should have. And that's pretty epic. But yeah, stay tuned for the next video we're going to do, which is Can You Beat Super Monkey Ball 2 with fucking Glade? Let's go. Well, thanks for watching. Like and sub for more, and I hope to see you all next time.